Hey everybody, it's time to learn how to make some slides. So I am gonna hang out for about 10 seconds and I'm gonna get started. I want you to know that this is for everyone. If you are an older student, these are the types of things that you can do by yourself when you have permission to be on the computer. If you are younger, you can do these with your mom or your dad or with permission with an older brother or sister. Um, but these are amazing, fun things that you can do on the computer. And first, I'm going to show you what a presentation looks like. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Oh, actually, before we get started, let me record my screen because I have not been able to save the videos for some reason. So let me just click on this. Let me record my screen. Hmm. Yeah, we'll record my screen. And I'm gonna click record. Are we gonna start over? Hey, let's make sure it is recording. Okay, we are gonna be talking about making slides. This is for everyone, whether you are an older student or whether you're a little one. Um, if you are a young tyke, this is something that you can do with your mom or your dad or an older brother or sister. Um, and if you're older, these are fantastic presentations that you can do for school or for anything. So let me show you first what these slides look like. And I want you to say hi. So when you say hi, uh, make sure you say your name because I don't know. Um, otherwise, it just pops up Facebook user. So say hi. OK, so you ready? We're going to first I'm going to show you what these slides look like. So this one right here, let me click in. This is my son Stephen's ancient civilization slide show. He's working on it right now. It's going to take him all year to do. And every week he works on his presentation about ancient civilization. So let me show you some of the slides here. Um, can you read that? It's in red and I, my old eyes can't see this, but he's learning about all the parts and pieces of what makes a people group a civilization. Things like having organized cities or government. They have an organized religion, uh, forms of writing. They have a social structure, like someone in charge and other people not in charge. They have some sort of art. And then he talked about empires, and then what countries are, what city-states are. And now he's going through the year, he's taking those things like art and religion and government, and he's looking at different people group way back in history. And he's putting in pictures and words and maps and all kinds of stuff as he is studying history. Isn't this cool? So this is called a slide presentation. And you can click through with a button or you can even click so that it automatically plays. And the reason why this is so cool is what he can do is he can stand up and he can show this presentation and share what he's learned. Now you can make, hey Emily, you can make slide presentations about anything. You can make it about antique knitting machines. You can make it about butterflies. You can make it about ancient civilization or the heart or anything. And this is one of my kids' favorite, favorite ways to show that they're learning something because they get to play on the computer. They get to be creative on the screen. Uh, they get to change the color and um, the, the pictures that are added. They can even record their voice and they can talk over on the slides. And so what I wanted to show you was how you do these things. And then I have a very special, it's don't call it homework because I hate that word homework, but I have a special game. It's called a scavenger hunt that you will be able to go through and make your own slide presentation and it will teach you how to do it along the way. So are you ready to get started? This is something that you can watch later. You can watch me do all these things again or you can just go through the the scavenger hunt and it will train you how to make a slide presentation. So number one 
you have to choose some thing on the computer to help you make your slides. I always use Google Slides. It's a program that's free from Google. Now, I didn't always use Google Slides. I used to just do it on my computer. But then about seven years ago, my computer died and I lost everything that I've ever made or saved on that computer. So my husband taught me to save it on Google because on slides, it's saved in that crazy place called the cloud and it never goes away and it automatically saves your work. So that's why we're going to use Google Slides. So let me show you what Google Slides looks like. You would just Google Google Slides and then get into the drive. And let me let me share the right screen. Let me first pick, make sure I want to go here. Is that where I want to go? So I want to close that one. When you first open Google Slides, it'll look like this. So let me show you. Remember, it takes a second because my computer has to click back and forth. When you first click and open Google Slides, it will look like that. And what you're going to want to choose is you're going to want to choose that personal side and you're going to click Google Slides. If you already have a Gmail account, this is for mom or older kids. So if you already have a Gmail account, this is part of your, it's part of your account. You can automatically get Google Slides. If you don't, it's super easy to get. So you, you would click in there. So you're going to click on Google Slides and then it will give you an option to start a blank presentation. So I'm going to actually share a different screen so that I can start showing you how to do this. So, and I remember I have a special link for you after that I will post when we're all done. So I want, not this one, but I want that one. So once you have Google Slides, this is called Google Drive. Everything has its own set of vocabulary. Whether you're talking about knitting or cars or math, everything has special words. But this is Google Drive. And over here on the left-hand side, you're going to want to click on this new. So you'll click on that. And then you'll click on this slides. And then you're going to go to a blank presentation, which, of course, opens in a different screen. So let me share that screen. So once it opens, we're almost ready. Once it opens, now I can show you. Dun, 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 dun. This is what it looks like. So this is what it looks like when you open up Google Slides. And I'm going to show you some of the tricks, some of the things that you can do out here. And then I want you to pick. I want you to think about, well, what can I make a presentation about? My Steven right now is making a beautiful presentation about um, the heart and it is fantastic and it parts move and jump up and down and it's really, really cool. But there's all kinds of stuff that you can do here. So I am going to talk about, hmm, what should we talk about? I am going to say butterflies. So let me, so we're going to do a pretend, not a pretend. I'm going to show you how to make slides and we're going to use the subject. We're going to use the topic of butterflies because I love butterflies. So let me, let me give you a tour right here. This right here, this middle part of the screen is where you are creating things. So you see when I click on this, different boxes pop up. We'll talk about that in a second. Over here off on the left hand side, that's where you're going to see if you have different pages to your slideshow. So the very first thing that we're going to do is remember we've chosen a topic. So we're going to make we're going to make it have a name so that we can find this again in Google. So you're going to click over here on the on the left where it says untitled presentation and you're going to write butterfly or butterflies or whatever your topic is. And then you can see that now I've I've named my slides butterflies. And so what kinds of things can can I put in here 
if I was going to be learning about butterflies, I would be learning about, oh, let's talk about that, the life cycle of a butterfly, um, different kinds of butterflies, butterflies in my hometown. So those would be types of things that we can do. And on, in a presentation, and, and where you're going to just send a link to someone so that they can see what you're learning, um, you will have different slides to show different pieces of information. So let's make three slides and then let me show you how you change everything around on the slides. Are you ready? Right over here, see up here across the top where it has the words file, edit, view, insert, see all those words. That's a toolbar, another vocabulary word. You're going to want to click on slide when it's your turn. You're going to click on there and you're going to click new slide. And then you're going to do it again. You're going to click on slide and you're going to add new slide. And if you look right here over on the left, you'll see that there are now three slides ready to go. Can you see that? And now I want my first slide right here to just say butterflies. Now, see how this has letters? Click to add title. This is called a text box. A text box is a space that letters or words can fit in. It's a box to hold your letters and words, a text box. So when I click in there and I write the word butterflies, you can see that it's only there within the text box. And see how it has a line around it? That's the border of the text box. And you can do a lot in there. You can, if you, the, the thing, your mouse on the keyboard, that thing that goes across the screen with the arrow, that's called a cursor. That part of your, your mouse, if you click on that text box again, you can see when you move it, see how when I go to the corner, it changes to an arrow like that. That means that I can click and hold, and then I can drag that text box and it will change the size. Isn't that cool? I can also move my, my little mouse and my cursor around until I get that, that cross. When I click and hold on that, that means I can move the text box around. Can you see that? Now I'm clicking and I'm holding and I'm moving it, but I want you to watch for the red line. Do you see the red line right there? That means that text box is centered right in the middle of the page. Now, that's how you can add words. But what if you wanted to change the color of the words? Does anybody know how to do that? You would, if you, you want to do what's called highlight, see how, see what that looks like when it's colored blue. That's highlighting the text. So the way you can do that is you take your mouse and you click twice on my computer. That's how you do it. You double click and it'll highlight everything in the text box. Or you can click at the beginning of or the end of a word and then you hold it and you drag your mouse across it and then you let go and then that highlights the word. And then you can play with what you want your letters to look like. This is a lot of words about letters, but one of the things about a slide presentation is that there should be a few words on your slides so that people know what they're looking at. You don't want a lot because people won't read everything, but you do want a little bit in there. But then I want you to look up here. See, this is a toolbar right across the top. Can you see that? Right here, see this number 52? That's what size those letters are. That's a 52 size font. And if you if you click on that little arrow, you can make it all different sizes. Look, here's a 96 size font. That's big. You can also make it super small. And see the smallest you can go is six. Woo! Can you see it? It's so teeny tiny. Don't use a size six font because people would need a microscope to be able to read it. On a slide, you want to make it um, fill your screen in a way that you can read it comfortably and that you think other people can read it comfortably as well. Does that make sense? So you can add a text box 
or you can use that text box that's already there. You can write in whatever words you like, and then you can change the size of them. Now, if I click back in there, well, somebody is talking about me. You ever hear what grandma say that when you they got a tickle in their nose? Um, if you highlight the text, now you can play with what the letters look like. If you click right here, I did that without talking. So I highlight your for words is Arial, and then it has this drop down menu. This is like getting to pick through everybody's different kinds of letters or handwriting or printing. This is called font, and these are different font styles. So watch what happens. You get to play with what the letters look like. What if I put it in cursive? That looks kind of cool. Or what if I put it sometimes Sometimes you just want it to look like a computer type thing. That's called bangers. But there's all different kinds of font, different styles, and you can play with them until you like how it looks. So I'm going to leave this in an easy to read font. I'm going to do this one um, called Katana, Katana 1, and I'm going to leave that right there. So that is how you would you that's how you would fill in the text. There's another one already here. When you open a Google slide, it automatically puts a few text boxes, text boxes in there for you. But you don't have to keep them there if you don't want. You can get rid of them. And the way that you get rid of them is, see how you can see the blue line? You put your mouse right on top of the, right on top of one of the blue lines until the arrow pops up and you click on it and then you hit delete. And then that text box goes away. Okay, so Miss Becky, that's kind of boring. All you did was put the word butterfly on a page. Okay, what if I wanted to put a picture of a butterfly on there? Now, if this is just for you and just for your family at home, you can add pictures into here without worrying about where you get them. If you're going to share them with other people, you need to um, you need to follow some rules. Um, but we're not going to really talk about that right now. I'm going to assume that your thing that you're going to create is just for you, just for your family, and maybe if I'm lucky, you'll share it with me too. But let's put a picture of a butterfly on here because we're talking about butterflies. So how can we do that? We might have pictures saved on our computer, or if we don't, we can actually insert them. We can paste them from the internet. And the way that you do that is see up here where it says insert. Let me make sure it's still showing on there. See how it has that insert button right there? You'd click on the insert and you'd go to image. Image is another word for photo or picture. And then you Drag your finger over to the drop down menu and see where it says search the web. Now you're going to click on that and it's going to open a search bar on the other side of the page. And over there, you're going to put butterfly. And I want it to be a picture that doesn't have any background and it has a funny little um name to it. You want to put the letter, so you put a space after whatever you're looking for, and then you put the letters P and G. That's going to stand for a special kind of picture that's going to pop up. And look, look at all the butterflies. Oh my goodness, they're my favorite. I love blue butterflies. So I'm going to put this butterfly in there. And what I do is I click on it and see how the insert down at the bottom popped up. So I'm going to put my mouse on the insert and it's going to put the butterfly right there on my slide. Isn't that pretty? Now see how I've got my little cross thing? I can move this around anywhere I want it on the screen. And I, I might think oh, that's a little big. So I want to make it smaller so I can grab the corner. I move my mouse over to the corner till it gets that arrow and I click and I pull that up and I can change and move the butterfly around. Isn't that cool? But that's not all. I can even tilt the butterfly if I want it to go a different way. See this ball up at the top? See how it has a square with a line and a ball? You can grab that ball and see how now it makes an X. You click and hold 
and drag and look at the butterfly will tilt off to the sides. Isn't that cool? I do that a lot on some of the printables that I make. Now, a fun trick with things like bugs or uh, butterflies or birds, if you want it to look like they're flying around, you can put a dotted line underneath them. So I want to make a squiggly dotted line underneath that butterfly. I can do the can. So what I need is I need a scribble that I can change into dots. So let me show you where that is. See this part of the toolbar again? There's some other things hiding in here that are really cool. See this part right here? When I put my mouse over it, it pops up. It says line. So I want to click on the drop down arrow and see the scribble way at the bottom? We've got line, arrow, elbow connector. These are fun to play with. Curved connectors, curves, polylines, and a scribble. So I want to scribble and see how it has an X. So I want to start my scribble right here with the butterfly. And I'm going to click and I'm going to drag a line and then I'm going to let go. And I want you to see what that looks like. So I'm just going to go like that and I let go. See how you can see the line from where the butterfly has been flitting around. Now, if I click away from there so you can see, oh, that just kind of looks, that's not a dotted line. I want it to be dotted. So I'm going to click on it again so that it highlights. Got to find it. Click on it. So I want to highlight it. So all I have to do is click on the line and it goes, it pops up like that. I can make it smaller the same way that I can make it smaller. I can drag it around the same way you can drag letters around. If you ever make a mistake, let me show you the magic button. The magic button in Google is right here. See that arrow? You just click and you undo things and it, it fixes your mistakes. You go back to where you just were. So I want to make this dots. So here's where the scribble is. This right here is the color of the line. So it can be any color I want. Right now I just made it blue, but I don't want it uh, blue. So now I, I gotta, you have to highlight it in order to fix it. Whoops. Come on, Miss Becky. Did I mess it up? I did. Okay, so highlight the line. And then, so here's the line color. This right here, the line weight, is how thick the line is. If I, make, if I really want a bolt, that's way too thick. That looks like a marker or a dry erase marker. That doesn't work. For butterflies, I want it to stay small. But right here, see this one right here? That's where I can find my dotted lines. And then now look, now you have this gentle, very soft line where the butterfly is going across. Isn't that cool? So I've got a slide. I can change the color of the letters of anything that I have there. I can change this right now. This, this part of the page is called the background. I can change the background color. That would be right here. So when I click on it, I click on background. That's going to be everything behind the words and the pictures. So if I click on that background and I make it, oh, let's make it light blue like the sky. Did you see it change? And then I click done. Suddenly it changed the, just the back color of that slide. So that's a lot in there. Can you see that there are a lot of things that you can do to change the way that your slides work? The way that my son created his slides is he used these over here on the right. These are all different. Oh, they're called themes. And if you click on one of those, you can play with them when you make your own slides. If you click on one, you'll see that it'll just change the background to all the slides that you're working on. Um, you can see that on the other slides over here, because remember, we made three slides at the beginning. But I don't like black. I like to start with white. So I have three slides. I have butterflies. I want to do this when I added another slide. Maybe I don't want these text boxes there. I can take them away just by clicking on them and getting rid of them. Well, what if I want it to be something a different, like the way that my son did it? What if I want a picture on one side and words on another side? How would I do that? Well, words always go inside a text box. So I need to add a text box onto this slide. 
So the way that I would do that is see this, this little box right here with the T inside, that stands for text box. So when I click on that, I, it gives me that cross. I click and drag it open. And suddenly I have a box where I can write anything I want. I can put butterflies are amazing. Um, they, I got to spell right, they have a great life cycle. Oh, that's not very creative, but that's what I wrote, and that's okay. So I can, inside that text box, I can write anything that I want. If I want to check my spelling, I can even do that too. Did I spell everything right? I can click on this tools right here. And I, if I click on that, I can click on spelling and I can check my spelling and it'll tell me, oh, there's no spelling wrong. There's nothing wrong. So I can click out of that. So I can add that. Let's see if there's any life cycle of a butterfly picture. So let's look again. Remember, I want to, I want to put a picture here. So I'm going to go to insert image, search the web. I'm going to put butterfly life cycle. Let's see if there's anything in there. <gasps> there is. I didn't know that there would be. I didn't look at any of these before. So I clicked on it and I inserted it. Look, I'm going to look so smart. Look at how cool that is. A gulf fritillary life cycle. It starts with the eggs. Oh, I know. Let's go over here into the text box. I said butterflies are amazing. They have a really great life cycle. Where does that life cycle start? With the eggs, right? So let's make, um, when you make a list, you sometimes put little bullets or arrows to make a list. If I want to make a list of the life cycle, I would hit enter or return. Then I, in my toolbar way over here, see how it has the dots? I'm going to click on the little arrow and I want to, I want arrows for a dot list. So look at this. See how it made an arrow? So I'm going to put the life cycle starts with the egg. Then I'm going to hit enter. Then it goes to that word that's a funny word. It's called a larva. Then after the larva, the wormy thing, eats a lot, it spins itself into a chrysalis cocoon if it's a moth and then as an adult it will be a butterfly so the adult is the butterfly so now I've made a text box where I have a picture on there where I have the 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 words what is going on over there in the life cycle and if I think that that's too small I can highlight all of the letters remember clicking and dragging and covering all the letters and then I can pick a larger font. See the numbers? Right now it's a 14. So let's see what 36 looks way too big. Don't you think that's way too big? I think that's way too big. So let's make it 24. That's better. So now I have, let me click, see the blue box? In order to look at the slide, I want to click away from there. And that's what the slide looks like so far. So we have over here, if I click on this left side, this is a lot, huh? But it's really fun once you get to do it. I have a title. I have a butterfly that's kind of flitting and floating across the screen. I have the life cycle of the butterfly. You know what? I think you're ready. I think you're ready to actually make your own slideshow. And I think that you're smart enough to actually go through the scavenger hunt and to build your own slideshow. So I'm going to show you what it looks like, what the scavenger hunt looks like, and then I'm going to set you free like a butterfly. I want you with your mom or your dad to make a slideshow. Follow the scavenger hunt. Are you ready? Let me show you what it looks like. So the scavenger hunt looks like this. Dun, dun, dun. This one. Da, 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 da. Okay, so these are the steps. I'm going to put the link to this scavenger hunt 
after the video. And what you're going to do is you're going to click on the link. It's going to say, do you want to make a copy? Say yes. So you click yes. Then this is going to open up for you. And you follow the screen. One will tell you this is a Google slide scavenger hunt. You can't share it with anybody. It's just for you, okay? So this is not, you cannot share this outside of this group. This is part of one of my master classes and I created this as part of the class, but I would love to share it with you. So promise that you won't share it and then you can go through it. So that's what that first slide, but then this is how it works. Your mission is to complete the 10 scavenger hunt items in blue. There's one on each slide. So can you see how down here at the bottom it says number one? That's your first task. Your very first thing is to change the page setup of the presentation. What does that mean? Change the page setup. If you follow the directions, it'll tell you how to make it instead of a long skinny presentation it's going to have you make it the same size as a piece of paper eight and a half by eleven so and it tells you what to do right here you go to file then you go to page setup then you go to custom and you go to eight and a half by eleven so this is the only one i'm going to show you how to do and then i'm going to set you free are you ready so this tells me to go to file. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to find the word file. I'm going to click on file. Then it tells me to go to page setup. I'm going to go to page setup. Click. Then it tells me to go to custom. And then it tells me to go to eight and a half by 11. And then I'm going to click apply. And look what happens. It changed the size of the slides and now it looks like the size of a piece of paper doesn't it so isn't that cool so on this slide presentation and i'm going to undo this so that you can see on this slide presentation there are different tasks for you to do on each page if you can't read yet you need mom's help but you're going to be putting in uh, youtube videos you're going to be putting in a map of the world and all kinds of fun stuff so I want you, uh, just give me a second to post, give me a second to grab the link so I can share it with mom. And then over the next couple days, because this is not something you can do quickly, over the next couple days, make your own slideshow. It starts with you following the directions and doing the scavenger hunt. That's step one. Step two is to pick your own topic, something fun, and make your own slideshow. You ready? On your mark, get set, go do your slide scavenger hunt. Uh, it might be late where you are, so maybe it's something you do tomorrow, but have fun, okay? And share it with me here in the group. Oh, let, I'll show you the last thing. Let me show you how to share it so that you can share it with me. Are you ready? So when you're all done, your page will look different. Your, excuse me, your page will be this size. I want you to share the link with me so that I can see it. So you come up here to the share button and you're gonna click get shareable link. And see right here it says can view. All I wanna do is to be able to see it. So you copy that link and then you can post it in the comments so that I can see it when you're all done. Okay, so anyway, I love you guys. I hope you have a great night, a great day tomorrow, and I cannot wait to see what you guys create. Bye-bye.